It's the ranking member of the uh, committee, Mr. Gett of Colorado. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Like all of us, I'm deeply troubled about what our investigation has revealed about GM's business practices and its commitment to safety. Here's what we know. We know that GM has recalled over 2.5 million vehicles because of defective ignition switches. We know they should have done it much, much earlier. We know that GM failed to provide federal regulators with key information. And sadly, we know that at least 13 people are dead and there have been dozens of crashes because GM produced cars that had a deadly effect. Mr. Chairman, I have a copy of the ignition switch assembly for one of these vehicles, and this is it. A spring inside the switch, a piece that cost pennies, failed to provide enough force, causing the switch to turn off when the car went over a bump. GM knew about this problem in 2001. They were warned again and again over the next decade, but they did nothing. And I just want to show how easy it is to turn this key in this switch. If you had a heavy keychain like my mom keychain, or if you had if you were short and you bumped up against the with your knee, it could cause this key to switch right off. Mr. Chairman. We now know that these switches were defective from the start. In February of 2002, GM's ignition switch supplier, Delphi, informed the company that the switch did not meet GM's minimum specifications, but GM approved it anyway. Now, yesterday we sent Ms. Barra a letter about this decision. I'd like unanimous consent to make that letter a part of the hearing record. Without objection. Soon after this approval, the defective cars were on the road, and it didn't take long for problems to appear. In 2003, June 2003, the owner of a Saturn Ion with 3,474 miles on the odometer made a warranty report that he or she, quote, bumped the key, and the car shut off. GM would receive more than 130 similar warranty claims from owners about this problem over the next decade, but it never informed the public or reported the problem to federal safety regulators. The minority staff conducted this warranty analysis, and again, we prepared a memo about these claims. I'd also ask unanimous consent to put that in the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. Initially, GM opened multiple investigations into the ignition switch issue, each which concluded the switch was bad. It didn't meet the minimums. In 2005, GM identified solutions to the problem, but concluded that, quote, the tooling cost and piece price are too high. Thus, none of the solutions represents an acceptable business case. Documents provided by GM show that this unacceptable cost increase was only 57 cents. And Mr. Chairman, uh, we have a document that we got from GM. Somehow it's not in the binder. I'd ask una unanimous consent to put this in the, in the record Without as well. Without objection, so ordered. Another technical investigation completed in 2005 led GM to issue a technical service bulletin advising dealers to distribute key inserts to help reduce the problem. This was a simple fix to reduce the force on the switch. And Mr. Chairman, these are the keys of one of my staff members who actually owns one of these cars. And as you can see, there's a long, long insert. What the key inserts were supposed to do is go in the middle and just create a little hole so the key and the keys wouldn't go back and forth. Unfortunately, GM never made this bulletin public. More than 500 people out of, out of the thousands of drivers who had cars with faulty switches got the key insert, and GM knew it. Soon after this decision, company officials quietly redesigned the switch, but they never changed the part number. And astonishingly, this, company, this committee has learned that when GM approved a new switch in 2006, they did it with still, not, still knowing that the new switch didn't meet specifications. 
The company even put more cars with bad switches on the road from 2008 until 2011. And we still don't know all the information about this. Between 2003 and 2014, GM learned hundreds of reports of ignition switch problems through customer complaints, warranty claims, lawsuits, press coverage, field reports, and even more internal investigations. But time and time again, GM did nothing. The company continued to sell cars knowing they were unsafe. I know we have a lot of family members here, Mr. Chairman, and I know, and I want to express deepest sympathies to them, but I want to tell them something more. We're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to figure out what happened, and we're going to make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank Ms. Barra for coming. She's brand new at the company. I believe she's committed to fixing this situation. We have a lot of questions to ask today, though, and I know every member of this committee is concerned about this. Thank you very much.